Hello and welcome. My name is Shlomi Steinberg. In this talk, I will present the paper Towards Practical Physical Optics Rendering. This paper advances the recent line of work of physical light transport, in short, PLT. We introduced PLT at SIGGRAF 2021, and it aims to be a form of an unusual marriage between path tracing and physical optics. Let me start with a brief overview of what PLT aims to achieve. Our goal is a large-scale simulation of the propagation of electromagnetic radiation. By large-scale, I mean real-life complicated scenes and environments, the scenes that we wish to render and as they arise in practical applications. Simulation indicates that this is a computational discipline. We would like to devise a numeric framework that is efficient enough to perform these simulations on modern hardware in a reasonable amount of time. What we simulate is the propagation of light in a scene, as well as its interaction with that scene. This light can be of a wide range of frequencies, including visible, infrared, and radar, all of which are important for different applications. There exist very many tools that overlap with our stated goal. I will quickly plot a few representative categories of methods on a one-dimensional graph ranging from accurate but slow on the left, to fast but inaccurate on the right. The vast body of numeric rigorous wave solvers of all forms and varieties falls firmly onto the left hand side. Wave solvers typically aim to achieve an exact numeric solution to Maxwell's equation in some setting. In contrast, everything to the right of these solvers will be based on an approximate formalism. No matter how much computational power you would throw at these so-called asymptotic methods, you would never arrive at an exact solution. First, physical optics is a general and very well-known family of high-frequency approximations. Without going into details, under physical optics, the analysis is reduced to finding equivalent currents induced upon a surface, and then solving some diffraction integrals. To, to determine these currents, a propagation problem needs to be solved. But propagation in the large, complex scenes that we are interested in is difficult. Therefore, virtually all existing large-scale methods are in fact hybrid methods, where propagation is approximated via geometrical optics and is reduced to simple ray tracing. The most notable of these hybrid methods are the shooting and bouncing rays methods, which become popular over the last couple of decades. Last but not least, at the rightmost end, we have pure geometrical optics methods, like rendering, Geometrical optics can be understood formally as a high-frequency limit of physical optics. Pure geometrical optic methods, as well as hybrid methods, are fast and are able to render complex scenes that we see in films and more in the movies. However, geometrical optics propagation ignores important optics and is inaccurate. The full wave solvers as we know, can be accurate, but are prohibitively slow. In addition, being methods that operate on deterministic data, they require as input an explicit description of the scene at a sub-wavelength scale. But for large scenes, this is neither feasible and not, not even desirable. We want to operate with materials described via their observable optical properties, like roughness, and not an explicit ultra-high resolution surface profile. There exists then an unexplored domain where a practical, accurate physical optics method, unbound of geometrical optics limitations, would arise. And that is what PLT aims to be. As an example of what PLT can do, this is a rendering of a somewhat complex scene, illuminate, illuminated by sunlight and the sky. The scene is viewed through sunglasses that act as a polarization filter. 
In the scene, a few web interference effects are visible. First, we have both the glass window pane and the bicycle plastic spoke guard, both of which admit stress biofringence and appear iridescent, as well as the brake metal surface that acts as a diffraction grating. This is a close-up on the rear wheel assembly. The left is a photograph and the right is a rendering. Both are viewed through sunglasses and you can clearly see the diffraction grating dispersing light, as well as the stress by fringes on the spoke guard. And similarly, but without a polarization filter, the diffraction grating is intact, but the iridescence on the plastic spoke guard disappears both in the photograph and the rendering. So again, with sunglasses and without. Same scene, but at night, the only difference lies in the light sources. In place of sunlight, we have a pair of indoor lamps with halogen bulbs. The materials are exactly the same as in the day scene. Nevertheless, the diffraction grating disappears entirely, while the biofringent effects are still very, very slightly visible. In the paper, we demonstrate these effects with similar real-world materials and lights. The point is, we are able to reproduce the influence of the scene and the wave properties of light on this diffractive optical phenomena. All of this is done automatically. The materials remain constant just by changing the scene or the properties of the light source, we get a very different optical response from the grating or the bifringent materials, just as it happens in real life. This is possible because under PLT, light is understood as waves throughout the scene, globally, and we propagate light as waves throughout, never falling back to a purely geometrical optics treatment. In computer graphics, the reproduction of wave effects has motivated significant work. I would like to draw your attention to, attention to the difference between global wave treatment, as done by PLT, compared with the local treatment as done in, in essentially all the computer graphics works, as well as the hybrid optical methods that I briefly mentioned earlier. A local treatment means that some form of, that some formalism of wave optics is applied locally at microscale at a material, but the propagation to and from this material is done purely via geometrical optics ray tracing. But this implies that after modeling the local interaction, we forget that light is composed of electromagnetic waves, and by doing so, we neglect and discard important wave properties of light on propagation. This is another example um, of real world um, uh, this is another real world example of why these wave properties are important and should not be discarded. I made these soap bubbles from the same mixture, and the only difference between the left and the right videos is the light source. Both light sources produce unpolarized light of a similar color and intensity. Nonetheless, the stark change in observable optical response is very clear. The difference lasts, lies almost exclusively in the wave properties of light. No matter how accurate and rigorous your local formalism is, if you account for the wave nature of light locally only, then your local simulation does not have the capacity to accurately reproduce wave effects. And this is not limited to optical frequencies, how radio radiation diffracts around a pedestrian, thereby masking that pedestrian from a car sensor depends on its wave properties. And physical optic simulation in large complex scenes remains an open problem. Okay, so what are these wave properties and how do we formulate them under PLT? One option is to consider the electromagnetic field directly as done by wave solvers and some of the local wave treatments. But this would be far from ideal. Working with high frequency fields directly is difficult, as evident by the, by the limitations of wave solvers. 
more importantly, our sensors, the eye or a camera, observe electromagnetic radiation over a time that is very long compared to the light's period. And they do not observe the individual oscillations of the underlying fields. Consider the one-dimensional wavefronts illustrated at the bottom right. These are observed by, observed by some camera, and indeed the camera would not be able to tell apart the two wavefronts, because they time average to the same observed intensity and would appear identical to us. Put differently, the observable properties of light are statistical in nature. The same principles apply to observable wave interference phenomena. These two animations illustrate a pair of sources, yellow circles at the bottom, that produce light that is then observed as it falls upon the wall at the top. On the left, the sources radiate in sync, producing strongly correlated fields. As these fields propagate and superpose, clear dark fringes will form on the wall. On the right, the sources produce waveforms that are not correlated. Light then interferes constructively and destructively with roughly equal probability, and as we observe in time average, no visible interference pattern, patterns arise. These statistical correlations between the waveforms are what quantifies the ability of light to produce observable wave interference effects. And this statistical property of light is known as optical coherence. We do not need nor want to solve for the fields themselves. The second order statistical properties of light fully describe the observable properties of light, as well as its ability to diffract and produce visible wave interference optical effects. This is a primary motivation behind the formulation of PLT. Let me make this a little more concrete. Classically, under radiometric geometrical optics treatment, we understand light as energy carried by infinitesimal particles that propagate as rays. Under PLT, we understand light as electromagnetic energy carried by optical beams. Numerically, to quantify the optical properties of light, we typically use values of radiance. For PLT, we use correlation functions that quantify the optical coherence within the beam. A few notes about these optical beams. They are parameterized by very intuitive, classical, if you will, properties. Sourcing area, the solid angle into which power propagates, known as beam divergence, and the mean direction of propagation. Additionally, this beam carries power, which is quantified radiometrically. And finally, it admits wave properties notably the correlation functions that I mentioned a moment ago. These functions quantify the, stati the statistical similarity between the waveforms that are formed inside the beam over space. It is this statistical similarity that is the optical coherence of light. What we do can be understood as attaching these correlation functions to classical quantities, like the radians, thereby generalizing these classical quantities to physical optics. In the paper, we formally do so, starting with Stokes parameters vectors. The resulting construct quantifies the radiometric, polarimetric, and coherence properties of light in one convenient formalism. And we can propagate and perform light matter interactions with that construct. It makes sense then to call this construct a generalized radiance. Let me stress, this is done rigorously, and this is a necessary and sufficient formalism. Such a generalized radiance tells us everything we need about the observable properties of light, and because it does not explicitly capture the high-frequency oscillations of the underlying electromagnetic fields, it is much easier to work with analytically and numerically. It is worthwhile to note that under the short wavelength limit, the correlation functions become Dirac deltas. Therefore, the beam reduces to independent rays, a ray bundle. 
This means that our theory does indeed generalize radiometric pulse tracing. Any physically realizable electric field can be written as a superposition of these optical beams, implying that we may always work with these beams. These beams are constructed to form invariant optical fields, which means that they admit clear directionality because they propagate energy into the beam divergence only and nowhere else. They do not diffract on free space propagation. This beam divergence must be positive, but can be chosen to be narrow. For a variety of reasons, we want our beams to be wider than their spatial optical coherence, meaning that a single beam captures sufficient information. For practical reasons, we want narrow beams, because then they are easier to trace as they intersect less geometry. Narrow beams propagate energy from a small region in the scene to another small region, making them a, a more pass tracing friendly construct, so to speak. At optical frequencies, with a partially coherent light that we almost exclusively observe in real life and render with, a beam's cross section should be on the order of a few hundred micron. Note that so far we have made very little approximations or assumptions about the scene or light sources. Now we are going to assume that the scene does not admit geometrical details that are roughly a few hundred micron or smaller. Then we may simply approximate beam propagation with a ray, because the beam's cross section is small compared to scene features. This assumption is equivalent to saying that free space diffractions do not need to be considered, which is not a bad approximation at optical frequencies, and for rendering purposes. Note that we rarely are able to observe any notable free space diffractions, in, in contrast to the far more prevalent wave interference phenomena that arise on interaction with matter. This formulation falls neatly into a path tracing framework, in fact, we are able to formulate a linear rendering equation for generalized physical optics primitives. What we do then should be understood as Monte Carlo solving for the electric field's statistics. Contrast this fusion of path tracing with rigorous physical optics to the more traditional me methods. We are not interested in the underlying electromagnetic fields themselves, only their statistics contribute to observable properties. Instead of a finite element or boundary element method, we run Monte Carlo simulations, which for, for our use cases admit real benefits. Ultimately, what we are able to achieve is physical optics pass tracing that approaches the performance of a scalar radiometric renderer. So I have not discussed quite a few things that are covered in the paper. Um, in addition to other things, in the paper we derive core limits on the transformation of optical coherence based on thermodynamical arguments. These limits serve a very important purpose in making our theory more practical. We also introduce a wave BSDF and discuss how to import and sample this wave BSDF. Finally, we also discuss practicalities and how PLT works in a renderer. Thank you.